Have you ever wondered what it takes to run a successful vineyard? Soil is important and Mother Nature has to play her part. Some people even think it's important to have a staff that's related to one another. Join us today as we visit two family-owned and operated wineries, Whitehall Vineyards and King Family Vineyards, to learn the secret to their success and longevity. Come on! Now, people think that this is a very sort of wonderful, glamorous, romantic occupation, but it's a lot of work, isn't it? It's farming. It's farming, you know. Um, it's fun, though. And uh, we enjoy the product. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and other people, which we, works we out very well. We figured if we couldn't sell it, we could drink it. You know? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> well, talk about, you know, every, every winery and vineyard is unique. So talk about what sets Whitehall apart. What do you think is special? Well, I think the location, for one thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were very careful about choosing the location we were interested in. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have good air drainage. So the cold air doesn't tend to settle down on the vines and, and disturb the growth. Um, we have good air circulation, and you know, and and being in the Charlottesville area is just it's perfect. I mean, I wouldn't we wouldn't really want to be anywhere else. Um, we've enjoyed it very much. The community has been very supportive of us, both yes. um, personally and as a business. So uh, we really we feel blessed. Yeah. Well, one of the good things about Whitehall is, I'd say, our staff. You know, people come in here and taste, and on weekends you'll come in here, and they'll be, everybody will be laughing. Yes. So they yeah. get a good time out of it. Well, let's talk about the wine then. Let's talk about the varieties of grapes that you grow and the wines that you produce. We grow vinifera, Chardonnay, Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon. I think we're probably best known in this area for our Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we made uh -huh. a big, big name with our Chardonnay. Yes. Yeah. So our two top selling wines are our Viognier and our Chardonnay. Yeah. So how many acres do you have under vine? Fifty. Fifty. You taught me that. Under vine. Under vine. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty acres. Okay. And then you've won a lot of awards too. Let's, yes. let's do who wants to brag. <laughs> Go ahead, Dad. You're well, good. Well, we, when we started <laughs> off, uh, our first couple of vintages won the Governor's Cup twice. Back to back. Yep. Right? Yeah. And no one else has ever done that, right? I, I don't back know. to back? I well, I'm, I imagine somebody else has done that. Yeah. But uh, we were thrilled because, you know, we were young and uh, as far as the vineyard goes. And um, the, first, the first wine that won was a Cabernet Sauvignon, and the second was a Gewurz Traminer. And then in these 20 years, you've only had two different winemakers. Yes. Is that right? yes. that yes. seems pretty special and unique. We're delighted. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that seems good. That seems really good. Well, I guess they can tolerate us. <laughs> <laughs> and who is it that has the green thumb? Ta-da! <laughs> okay, because there are plants all over that you, you specifically chose to have here. You even have a beautiful map on the wall so that master gardeners who visit can come and enjoy the plants and the wine. And you do have a couple of events each year that are that are well, annual We do, we do um, two events each year that are uh, repeatable and annual. One is called Art in the Vineyard, okay. which was my mom's idea and it's just flourished. So we invite local artists to come and show their wares and um, people come and taste the wine. They can look at the art, they can purchase the art. It's great exposure for the artist. Um, we don't charge the artist anything because we really want them to have that exposure. And then the other one we do is our Valentine event, and we um, pair up with Gearhart's chocolate. Oh. And then people come in, and we have music, and we have the chocolate pairing and the wine, and it's, it's turned into a big event for us. Okay, so I have to ask this question to each of you. So what is your favorite of your wines? Oh, Dad, you're going to give them the standard answer you give? Yes. Okay. Okay. It's, it's like when somebody asks, we have five kids as well. So when somebody asks you, who's your favorite kid? It's usually the one that's with you. <laughs> so, so, this, is, this is my favorite. So, so it's usually the wine in your glass at the time. <laughs> uh, and then now you were talking about kids, which is a great segue to my last question is, so what is it like having a family-run business? Is that, is that a good thing? Is that a trying thing? It has turned out to be a very good thing. 
Tony has the green thumb. Tony has the chemistry chemistry background. Oh, yeah, right. So he likes to meddle in, in the winemaking and so forth. And Lisa is great with people, and she works with everybody here in our tasting room. And I get to do the books. <laughs> well, joy for you. <laughs> You also said something to me earlier, uh, in an earlier conversation about the, that the grapes were almost like your children, little babies. Talk about that. Well, that's how I feel. Um, for once, I, it, it, being here with my parents is an honor and a privilege to work with them. It's been fabulous. I, it's like a dream come true. You're not going to get any more money. <laughs> well, I do think that. So I do feel like, no, that the grapes are kind of like our children, and we watch them from their infancy, and they grow, and they mature, and then they come and harvest, and you're watching them because that's your bread and butter. You want them to come in and be strong and produce great wine. So it's, it's exciting. This is an exciting business to be in. Well, this is great. I say we toast to you. Oh, we'll and toast to you. We'll toast to you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. all. Okay, so let's talk about running a family business together. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Uh, I think it depends on the day. At the stage where we are now, where um, everybody is an owner, and as owners and grown people and doing most of the work, uh, they have to have the majority of the decision making. And that's a change, that's a flip flop. When it's mommy and daddy, and, and three boys in the house and everybody's a teenager, that's one thing, but it's not that way anymore. So it's a, it's a change for sure. It's just more, you know, more people putting their two cents in, which sometimes makes it harder rather than just being the one that has to make the decision. How so. do you decide, because there are so many of you, how do you decide who is it that does what? It's, it's evolved. I mean, a lot of hard work, some luck. Um, and knowing where everybody's role is, I mean, Carrington and I kind of take over outside. Um, you know, I don't particularly love being inside, and James does, and he's great at it. So um, knowing where people, where their strengths are and putting them in those roles, I think, is, has been good. So. And let's talk about the beginning. Let's talk about why you decided to start a winery in the first place. Well, again, depending on the day, that's either the worst possible decision one can make or the best possible decision that's ever been made. The short story is, um, what we tell in the tasting room, and it happens to be true, is that in 1998, a young man, a name lost to history. The ghost. Knocked on the door, the old farmhouse, we were sitting at the table, and he wanted to lease or buy 10 acres of land for a vineyard. And um, I, I won't say that we asked what a vineyard was, because we did, in fact, know what a vineyard was. But um, we said, uh, it's not for sale, it's not for lease, but come on in and have dinner and show us what you have, which he did. After he left, we uh, said, well, we could do that. That should be fun. Let's try that. And we're still falling down the slippery slope. <laughs> I love that. So talk about the grapes that you grow and the wines that you produce. We've, we've always grown five, five varieties have been our stable, um, and it's always been Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Petit Verdot, uh, Chardonnay and Viognier are the two whites. Uh, but just last year we've planted uh, an additional seven acres. We're trying to catch up with demand and, and planting every year. Um, and we added a little bit of Petit Mansang that we use for late harvest wine and a little bit of Malbec, which we um, blend into our Meritage. And you have done well. You've won awards. Who wants to talk about the awards? The easiest way to go at that is to probably go back to the 2002 vintage. Mm -hmm. Michael Schaps was our winemaker here, and the 2002 Cabernet Franc from here was the Governor's Cup winner. And so we got started with some competitive success uh, with the style at that time that Michael was making and the fruit that of course was coming out of this piece of ground and uh, since that time we've had uh, another Governor's Cup winner from our winemaker right now, Mathieu Fineau. The real competition is the marketplace. So every single consumer is a judge and when they give up their hard-earned money to buy our bottle of wine then we feel like we've done competitively well. Well, what I also like about the area wineries is 
there is a lot of collaboration. A lot you all work together quite a bit and help each other out. James, tell me some about that. Um, one collaborative effort we've done for four years centers around a wine called Three. And it is a collaborative effort between our winemaker, Mathieu, and Jake Bushing, who is at Grace Estate up the road, um, and Emily Pelton over at Veritas. And so each winery will contribute a third of the fruit. Three winemakers will give a little bit of their knowledge and they blend it together. And then we each get a third of the allocation, which has been really fun. So um, We talk all the time between vineyards. Um, if we all got in our castle and didn't share what we, what we knew, we would, um, I don't think it really pushes all of us forward, so. Right, because Virginia wine, it's such a growing industry and you want, everyone needs to look good so that it it's continues to grow. Mm -hmm. Um, there are incredible events that happen here. We certainly do a number of weddings, but we also try to help out the community by donating our space. So our space is used by some of the local public schools for auctions, Ducks Unlimited. Rescue Squad. The Albemarle County Rescue Squad. Um, Marine Corps Birthday the Ball. The Marine Corps Birthday Ball. So, um, and we did for, for nine years, we held um, the pink ribbon polo, which raised money for breast cancer research. Right. So um, it's been very rewarding. And then talk about polo, because polo goes on here. This polo that we have here is relatively, well, it's all amateur polo, but the horses are nice, the horsemen uh, ride well. We have very nice players locally. We never charge admission, it's free to the public. Come out and watch the horses and enjoy the day. Well, if you all, could catch up with the ghost, the gentleman who knocked on your door. What would you say to him? I wonder what he would say. Uh, but we'd That's all, we'd all, we'd obviously <laughs> all from the heart say thank you because this is, this is, look what we've been able to, where we've all been able to grow up and start raising our families. You know, we're, we're not all off in big cities looking for jobs. We've all been able to grow that organically right here. Yeah. Definitely say thanks. Let's yeah. let's toast to the ghost. Absolutely. Yeah, let's toast to the ghost. <laughs> to the ghost. All right.